You mentioned it was probably because of your wife that mm -hmm. you didn't leave the business. My wife, she's a person who has a, a, a dramatic and artistic sensibility. She said, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. If I thought you sucked, if I thought you were no good, if I didn't see the potential, if I, didn't, if I didn't think you could be big in this business, I would not tell you to continue to go on. If she didn't do that, there's a part of me that says I would have walked away, but I don't know because all my life I've, I, I've either had someone encouraging me or I've, I'll, I've, or I've had to find someone to create this conflict. You know, white teachers, where I was from, in South Carolina, one of the most reddest states I've ever, you know, of, of all time. Sure. Everybody there always said, you can do this. You can do whatever you want. So you didn't have a natural thing to fight against. Yeah, I had two parents. You didn't have a, you know, broken household. And I had teachers that encouraged me. It was the worst thing you could have as an actor because it, you, it makes you believe in yourself and, and, and could, you could underachieve if, you, if, you, if you're not careful. Because in grad school, I didn't, I didn't have it so easy. I mean, grad school, I got, you know, I got kicked around. I was on probation. I didn't take it seriously the first year. I looked around and I thought, I can do this. And, and I never really allowed them to, they wanted to break you down. That's, that's what was hard for me. They wanted to get, to get you to a place where you didn't have that confidence anymore. Wanted you to, didn't want to go through that work. I didn't want work. to go through that work. I didn't right. want anybody to peel back the layers and try to figure out what was underneath all this stuff. I spent all my life, like most adults, building up this guard, you know, trying to make sure that nobody gets in and nobody hurts you. But that's the thing about actors. You gotta let people get in and, and touch you and, and, and make you feel things that you don't want to feel. And so for the first year, most people were in that class were walking around crying all the time. They were, you know, mad. They were, there were just emotions. That's all it was, emotions, just emotions. And I was just like, this is ridiculous, you know? Because that was what it was. They were trying to give me the tools. So then when they built you back up and they started doing scene work, you, had, you were emotionally available and you, and you knew how to respond. You knew how to be in tune with your partner. So it took between the first year and the second year for me to realize that I hadn't come this far to fail and that I wouldn't, I, I couldn't allow my my ego to get in the way of progress. And so you said you were on probation. Do they almost like kick you out? Yeah, they send you a letter and they tell you officially, listen, you know, this is where you are and, and this is this is what we're gonna do and if you don't get any better, we're gonna you know, kick you out. Artistic probation. There's lots of probation. Artistic probation. It was artistic <laughs> probation, yeah. It was a soul searching moment for me because now I had something to prove. It was like, not only can I do this, I'm way better than, these, than the people that are looking down their noses at me. And I really took that Personal, like for me, I had to, I, I started manifesting this, this, you know, this, this me against the world kind of thing because I knew that that, that people had kind of like passed judgment on me in the class, and people were like in, in faculty members had kind of said, yeah, we know who this guy is, and that burned me up. And so I started working and doing everything that I, I knew that I had to do. I wanted to somebody to put me against the wall and say, we'll see if you can do it. And I, and I, from there, from there, that point on, it was about you know proving them wrong and proving myself right.